friends, Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa String Works Workshop. Those of you who are regular followers of the channel know that uh, I have a lot of interests, um, music being the main one um, with the instruments and working on all the instruments that I've done. But you know, I also build a lot of machinery and you know, like a log splitter for the front of my skid steer and a grapple bucket for the skid steer and a hydraulic brush hog for the skid steer, a dump trailer, you know, and I'm trying to think of what else. I've built several things. Uh, the sawmill too, yeah, I made a uh, bandsaw sawmill. Well, in addition to all of those things, you know, I have other hobbies too and I like to hunt. Well, the rifle deer season just concluded here in Missouri. Matter of fact, yesterday, up to this point, I hadn't had any trouble on deer with this rifle. Now this rifle, it's unloaded. I've got the clip out of it and there's nothing in the chamber. I can even take the bolt out just to make it that much safer. So the bolt's out of it. Every once in a blue moon, you pull the trigger on this gun. Now this is a Ruger American 308 Winchester type uh, bullet. You pull the trigger and it goes click. Nothing happens. Most of you are immediately going to know what the problem is. You're going to say you left the bolt part way up or you didn't have the bolt closed all the way or you know you um, didn't have the clip in all the way or you know something like that. Let me tell you something, if it was simple like that, I'd have already figured it out. Trust me, you can bet on that one. You can stake your life on that one. It ain't simple. It's a random problem that occurs on this gun. And I have tried every single scenario I can dream up. I even wrote them down on paper, trying different things like leaving the bolt part way up, you know, putting the safety on, taking the safety off, up and down, you know, tr I've tried everything. Shot a box of shells through this thing. Could not make it fail one time. It never failed once. So sending this to a gunsmith to have them fix it would be totally useless because on a random problem like that, they're going to go, oh, well, I did this and I did that and I cleaned such and so and your fire pin was this and that and, you know, whatever. And they're going to charge you a big bunch of money. And I guarantee you, I'll still have the problem because they never get to the root. And I, I don't mean just gunsmiths. I just mean repair people in general. They never get to the root of the real cause of the problem. They just do the normal stuff and charge you for it. And then you still have your problem. Trust me, been there, done that. And I'm sure you have too. So I'm going to try to fix this myself because I know I don't give up easy, number one, and I will get to the root cause of the problem rather than lip service like most folks do. Now, I say I will. I'm not a gunsmith. I've never had a gun like this apart entirely, but this sucker is coming apart as far as I can get it, and I'm going to see if I can figure out why this is happening. Let me show you what's going on. This is a primer on the end and you can see that that one fired. See how it dented it, the primer in there in the center? It's got a dent in it. This one, you can see the bullet is still on there. The bullet is missing on that one. That's the one that fired. The bullet is still on this one. It did not fire, but you see there is a mark there. It just didn't go very deep. Now I will tell you, that's the deepest it's ever marked and not fired. It's not bad ammunition, trust me. I guarantee I could put this in the gun Hit it again and it'll fire. These are high quality bullets. These are Hornady, I believe is what these are. Uh, it's not the ammunition, trust me. I've had every kind of ammunition you can think of in this thing and it's, it's done it four times. And I just started using the Hornady, so it's not the Hornady. The point is three times it did this, it did it on a coyote. Now, if you know anything about coyotes, it goes click and it makes that loud click that coyote, he's like this. He's looking, boy. He's wondering what's going on. And then as soon as you move to throw out the shell to throw it in, he's gone. You don't get a second shot on a coyote. Well, the deer, he was a little dumber than that, so I did get the deer. The point is, I got to figure this out. It's driving me crazy. So to me, I kind of think it's narrowed down to there's a problem with the actual 
firing pin, you know, going in and out, the hammer that hits the firing pin, and or it's something to do with the safety, on and off with the safety or something like that, and it's not letting the thing trip all the way. It's got to be something like that. It's not the bolt. Trust me, I have messed with the bolt every way you can mess with it. Now, I'm not saying it's not the firing pin in the bolt, and I'm not saying it's not maybe a spring or something in there on the firing pin or something like that. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying it's not the fact that the bolt wasn't down or the bolt wasn't closed or anything like that. It's definitely not that. I just don't know what it really is though. Here we go. I just want to say one more time that that's the deepest it's ever marked the primer without firing. In the past, it just made a teeny tiny little mark on there. I mean like, bare, and this one here is a fairly decent mark, but it's not, it's not like that. If you understand there's the two side by side you can see the difference you know the little pin comes out of the end of this out of the end of this bolt here I'd like to get this apart and to be honest I don't really know where to start to take it apart those of you who are gun experts and uh, maybe gunsmiths you already know exactly how to take this apart. Well, I have no clue, but I'm sure I can Google it to figure it out. I'll figure out how this comes apart. Looks to me like there's a pin right here that I could drive out. And I'm not sure what that holds. It looks like it might hold a spring or hold this little pin right here. I'm not sure what that pin does either, other than it may retain the shell. I'm not sure, probably something like that. I just don't know. Like I said, I'm no expert on this, but I am good at figuring out how mechanical things work. I'm real good at that. So there's no doubt I can figure this out if I took it apart. You know, it's just like anything else. If you'd never done it before, you got to it takes you a little longer because you just don't have a clue of where to start or how to go about it. So I'm just looking it over good and I'll probably just go ahead and uh, use the resources we have like Google and YouTube and look up how to take this apart. That way, it'll just save me some time. Okay, I'm presently watching a video about this, and it's something I would never have thought to try, but you basically move this in line with this, and really that's all there is to it. So you just grab a hold of this, and you turn it like so. Now that's in alignment. Now, that's as far as I got in the video, so I'm going to go back and watch the rest of it and see what else I do here, because I don't want to have springs and gears flying everywhere. You know what I mean? Okay, so this now should slide off this plastic. That's what he says. Now he says, be sure you don't go too far and go past the center of this. And that's right where I'm at right now, I believe. This piece here, he replaced this piece on his, more like for accuracy and uh, ease of trigger pull and things like that. I don't care too much about all of that. All I really care about is what's causing my firing pin not to hit the cartridge correctly. You understand what I mean when I say sending this to a gunsmith would likely not accomplish anything because he'll shoot five, ten rounds through it and go, oh, it's fixed. And then I'll take it out in the field and it'll go click right when I need it to. Just like I said, three times on a coyote. You can't hardly beat that record once on a deer. But all the rest of the you know things I've shot, I've shot wild boar with it, I've shot other deer with it, various and sundry other things, targets, of course, and uh, it's never misfired. Just on three coyotes and one deer. I'm just looking at this as I'm talking, trying to determine if there's anything broken or war that I can see that's war. This is a fairly new gun. It's only had a couple of boxes of shells shot through it. And one of those, like I said, was trying to figure out what the problem is. I'm just looking at this to see if it looks like maybe this is swelled up or broken or anything because he said that this little mark right here causes a problem, you know, a weak spot. And I would believe that. That makes sense because that's the sh narrowest spot right there. But I don't see anything broken or, or cracked or anything. Well, I'm going to do some more investigation here and maybe see about taking the rest of this apart. This is a tricky operation here, but you jam this screwdriver in here uh, to compress the spring in a certain way. Then you can turn this whole operation around and pull the bolt out. And there's that little nasty firing pin. And 
as far as I can tell, it looks fine. I don't see anything broken. I'm assuming I can take this back out of there now. Maybe that was a mistake. Well, that was a mistake. Yep. Okay, well, I'll have to figure out how to get that back now. That's going to be a, a real challenge, but I'll figure it out. I can do just about anything. Nothing's broke, worn, that I can see here. The only thing that is even slightly concern, concerning, and it's only very minorly slightly concerning, is there's a little wear mark around the edge, kind of at a diagonal on that firing pin. And my guess is that's from pulling, it probably twists as it pulls back and it's just wearing there a little bit. Just wearing the bluing off is all it's done. It doesn't look like a groove or anything. So I don't see a problem there anywhere. I didn't really expect to find anything broken or a problem because like I said, it's a sporadic problem. It works most of the time. For my money, I don't think the problem's in here. Though perhaps there could be some dirt down in there, perhaps, you know, possibly. So I'm going to investigate that. I doubt it, but you never know. Really don't see a problem in, with that anywhere. No big wear marks or anything. That's a tight spring, I know that. Right now I'm feeling just like that gunsmith that would take this apart, clean it, put it back together and go, it's fixed. That's kind of the way I'm feeling right now. We'll see. I have a little solvent on here and I'm going to reach down inside, spin it around and see if I see anything. Am I pulling any dirt out of there? Just a little powder buildup maybe, but that's about it. Maybe a little grease or something. If you've experienced this problem with your Ruger American and you've been able to figure out what the problem is, I would like to know about it, but if you're just guessing, I've already done a lot of that, so I don't need guesses. Unless you're a gunsmith and you've got a very good educated guess, I'll take that for sure. I actually do see something, some kind of a buildup down in there. I didn't expect to see anything, but I do see something that looks like a buildup. Yeah, I think there is something there. Yeah, there is. Who knows? Maybe that's it. Maybe that during the manufacture of this, they got something stuck in there. You know what? That could be it. Because that's just about where this would ride. And maybe, maybe that debris floats around. There's definitely something up in there. I'm going to see if I can get it out. It's black and it's kind of like greasy like or something. I've moved it around a couple times and it seems like it might be dissolving. You can see the end of my stick there, how dirty it is. So I'm going to put some more of this on here and reach in there and swab around. You can see how dirty that is. Now, you know, granted there should be some grease or something in here, I'm sure. But that was like a look like, like a hard spot. You know, I had to push really hard to get it out of there. You know, maybe there's some way that something was catching on that. It definitely looks better. Still doesn't look great. This is just paint thinner I'm putting in here. And some, I'm sure there's going to be a gunsmith out there somewhere saying, paint that or will ruin your gun. You know, I'm sure. I don't think so. Pretty positive that it's not going to cause a problem. Well, that's definitely cleaned out a bunch of gook and junk in there. Now I'm going to look. I still see something. Now, I granted, I, I could imagine there might be something else in there that's supposed to be in there. I'm not so sure. As I keep rubbing this, the things that I keep seeing keep disappearing. And this gun is not old and dirty. I would really like to use it. I like the 308 caliber. I see something there that doesn't look like it should be there. It just looks like a little, almost like a scratch or etch or something in there. Yeah, definitely the things I'm cleaning out should not be there. I'm positive of it. 
They're not like, it's not like a pin or anything like that. It's about in this area right in here approximately. And it might be just enough to keep this thing from going down in there properly. I don't know if, if I can even get it in there right now with having kind of disassembled this thing. The pin is sticking in through the end there a little bit. It's just enough probably to make good full contact. I'm assuming that that must be the point at where it makes that contact right there, down in that deep spot. I didn't really expect to find anything, but I do think we found quite a bit of crud down in there, so that might be the problem. I doubt it. I kind of have my doubts that it was that easy, but we'll go with that first and see how it goes. Wiping it out some more. Now I'm gonna get some kind of a cleaner down in there and clean that out some more yet because it just still has a lot of junk in there, residue-like. How that got in there, I have no idea because like I said, this is basically a brand new gun. I took clean lacquer thinner and put on this one. Went down through there again. Lacquer thinner cuts just about anything. That's way cleaner than it was, so I think I'm gonna go ahead and grease it up and put it back together and see what happens. Making mistakes is how you learn. Obviously letting my screwdriver come out of there and letting that spring collapse was a bad idea. But I looked and saw how other people put these back together and it looks like I'm gonna to have to go ahead and take it the rest of the way apart in order to get it back together the easiest way. There's probably another way. And if you had a specialty tool to compress it, I'm sure that would work too. I don't have a specialty tool. I thought about making something that I thought would work. I just ground a nail there. I thought that nail would be strong enough to drive that pin out of there. Doesn't appear to be. We'll try something else. Now let's shorten the nail just by cutting it off and that seems like that's going to do it. And of course I drove it all the way through, which is perfect. That way I can lose the pin. Well, I found the nail, but will I find the pin? I would say the odds are slim to zero, but I think I did find it, believe it or not. Now I'll see if I can figure out how to put it back together. I have a feeling I've made a big mistake here. Uh, yeah, we'll see. I'm sure somebody can get it back together. Uh, I thought that by taking that pin out would just let this fly off of there, but uh, it doesn't seem to. Well, I actually uh, put the pin back because I noticed that if I turned this thing, I could pry that spring down with this by getting it in this slot. Now I've got a screwdriver in there. Now it's not back where it was, don't get me wrong, but I think I can maybe keep working it until I get it there. I think I can. Whoops, I let it slip that time though. Well, you gotta live and learn on these things. See, I can, I can pry it down and hold it in place with that. And then I can pry it down with that and hold it in place with this big one, I think. Cause it's gonna be difficult to get it back where it was, but I'm not too far from there. I'll figure it out. I'm pretty good at figuring things out. I'm getting close. Oops, I let it slide again. Well, that's not a big deal. I'll uh, do some thinking on this and I'm pretty sure I'll get this figured out. Well, I went ahead and backed up again and took this apart. I am reassembling it now. You can see here all the parts. It, this goes in, this bolt goes in like this with the notch on the top. It goes in from this side. This drops down in here. I put just the lightest little bit of machine oil on there, just the tiniest little bit, I, and just with my finger, and just really almost none, just enough to have something there. Now this gets put in, I believe it goes in like so, and I'm going to use vice grips to hold on to it. I'm going to set the vice grips where they'll grip it, but not, you know, go crazy tight or anything. So let me just adjust that. That's pretty good. That didn't really get very tight. And I'm gonna push in. Then I think I have to, well, I thought it would turn, but I can't get it to turn. 
Well, doggone it. I'm going to probably have to take a shallower bite. I was, I took a deep bite on it because I thought I could get away with that, but I probably have to take a shallow bite. I'll try that yet again. There it went. Yep, that time it worked. Okay, I believe I got that locked in there. I think that I can put this on and screw it down. Really don't know everything I should know about this. I'm just doing what makes sense. Got an idea that maybe I need to pry this up. There must be a trick here I haven't figured out yet. I mean, this is getting tighter and tighter and gotta be a way to do that easier than I'm doing. I have to get it up threaded far enough to get the pin back in there and haven't quite made that yet. So just not quite sure how to do that. I don't think I can keep turning it by hand. I'll investigate. Well, the way the other fella did this, he's basically doing the same thing. He, but he used vice grips and clamped them on here. I hate to use a vice grips for this, so I think I'm just going to use my plastic pliers here. I think that's less chance of creating a problem. And again, maybe it'll create a bigger problem. Who knows? And he says you basically just keep rotating this until. You get the uh, head up through there far enough to put the pin back in. That's looking pretty good. I, based on the hole I see, that looks pretty good, but I'm going to turn it one more. That's pretty close to how much was sticking through there before. Difficult to say for absolute certainty if it wasn't one more yet. <laughs> it's hard to say. Pretty close, I know that. I think that's it right there. I'm not going to go anymore. And there's the pin starting there. So I've got the pin and a piece of wood here to uh, soften the blow a little bit. I can take the little punch thing I made, hopefully hold it there. It's going through most of the way, but I'd like to get it a little further. A better punch would be real nice. If I had one more hand, this would be a piece of cake. That's pretty good. It's almost there. That's in there even. Now I know there's some lining up to do here and some stuff. I hope I got that right. It's hard to say. Well, as a matter of fact, I remember distinctly this was lined up with this. So I think we're in pretty good shape, actually. The one thing I'm not 100% sure of, and I was going by his video, our, our fellow I was watching, it, they didn't talk about this little offset here and this is flat on this side. I don't know if you can see that in the camera but this is flat here, this black, and then right here it's got an offset. I've got it to the bottom of this right now to this heavier piece. I don't know if that's right or not. I truly don't know. The reason you do that is to put this thing back on here I think and I think it's turned back this way. Uh, that don't look right I gotta be honest. I don't think that looks right either. <laughs> I'll figure it out eventually though. More than likely it's that part I was talking about. It, anytime there's a 50-50 chance, there's almost a 100% chance I'll get it wrong. That pretty much is a black and white given. If that was a 50-50, I would say the odds are pretty good that I got it wrong. Although. That seems to be working pretty well now. Uh, I don't see a problem there. I'm going to put just a dab of little grease there behind this. Now, one fellow I was watching, he recommended this type of grease, this anti-seize. Now, of course, I don't want to make a mess with it. And that stuff goes everywhere. So I'm just going to take this little 
deal and just put the least little bit right in there. In fact, I'm just gonna go ahead and take the bolt out now that I know I can get it in and out. And I'll just put the least little bit of grease there on each of those. I think that's all I'm gonna do. Now the only thing to try is to see if the thing shoots. I'm pretty sure it's back together where it'll shoot, based on the way it's acting anyway. So I'll take it out there and fire it and see. Well, my friends, it's a couple of weeks after I fixed this 308. I have fired it once and I didn't get that on film and it fired fine. So I thought I would shoot it on camera here for you so that you could see that at least I got it back together correctly. I don't know that this will prove anything unless it misfires again. And of course, I don't want that, you know, because I was never able to make it misfire. I never could have that make it happen. But it misfired on four occasions now, three times at a coyote, one time at a deer. So the bottom line is I'm going to shoot it right now and just show you that it does shoot and we'll see what happens. I'm going to set this out there at about 30 or 40 yards, something like that. And there's two knots. You probably can't really see them. One's like right here. One's right here. I should call it like cores. And I'm just going to aim at the bottom one. I'll set this on the ground like this and I'll aim at this bottom one. I have a feeling it's going to hit high because I've got it sighted in for pretty far. So we'll see how it goes. Okay, I've got the gun loaded. As you can see here, it's uh, ready to go. I've got it in my hand, the 308. And I'm going to shoot that log. I'm back here behind the house at my garage. I'm guessing that that's a little over 30 yards. It's probably bumping 40. Anyway, it's not too far. And I'm just going to shoot it. Here we go. Well, obviously, I think you could tell it shot and I hit it. The scope, for whatever reason, uh, is a cheap scope, actually. It, I mean, it did cost 150 bucks or more. As scopes go, that's a cheap scope. So anyway, the bottom line is I, it wasn't focusable that accurately. I couldn't see the uh, specific knot, so I just aimed low on there. and We'll see where I hit. Well, my friends, when I first looked at it, I thought, I missed it. <laughs> I'm thinking it turned over. How did I, how did I turn it over without, without hitting it? So if you look, this was the bottom one that I was trying to shoot at. And you see that little pinhole there? There's a little pinhole there. It's just a tiny little hole. That's the entrance hole. There's the exit hole. <laughs> <laughs> so you can see it blew out. So I did. I hit exactly where I was aiming. I mean, like exactly. So I'd say the gun shoots pretty good right now. Is it fixed? I am not going to say that it's fixed because people do that all the time. They fix something and they claim they've won, you know. Well, I don't claim anything with something like that, with, especially with a a problem that you can't make happen you know it's just a sporadic thing I'll shoot it for the next you know several uh, shots out in the wild and we'll see how it goes but as far as I can tell right now I think that creep and crud inside the bolt in front of the firing pin was the problem there was quite a bit and I just want you to understand well this gun is several years old now it's had less than a box of shells shot through it. You know, I got it brand new, and it's done that since brand new. It wasn't something I did by not cleaning it or something like that. It had to be something from the manufacturing process that just got stuck down in that thing, and they didn't get it cleaned out or whatever. That bolt was hitting that creep and crud, and it was a hard surface. Uh, it took quite a bit of scrubbing to get it out of there. So I hope you enjoyed this rather different video for my channel. And, uh, of course, I, I know you love my camera angle here with it aimed directly at the sun. <laughs> this is not Hollywood. <laughs> Thank you so much for tuning in. If you're not yet a subscriber, please subscribe because you never know what you're going to see on this channel. And if you would, please click that thumbs up button. I would sure appreciate that as well. Thank you so much. Yeah.